Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to Number Seven Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermon net is called Spiritual Entrapment. Right now, there is a global spiritual entrapment, and right now, there is a national spiritual entrapment, and there is a local spiritual entrapment. The way the devil is going to supernaturally attack the body of Christ and mankind in general is to do it sneaky, subtle, and sly. Yeah, when the devil attacks you, he doesn't want to hold up a red flag and say, hey, I just want to warn you that this right here is a trap. I want to warn you that I'm going to trick you. I'm going to warn you that I'm going to tempt you. And after you fall victim or prey of this temptation, I'm going to destroy your life. No, the devil doesn't operate like that. He gets you to willingly put on the chains of slavery. He tells you that the metal and the chains is going to be good for your health. He tells you that the minerals inside the metal is actually going to penetrate through your skin and go into your blood system and promote a healthy heart. It's going to lower your cholesterol. And the devil constantly gets Americans and people throughout the world to be comfortable with the chains being around. And before you know it, the people through deception and persuasion and manipulation, they voluntarily put the chains on their own selves until they realize they're bound and they're trapped and it's too late if they ever realize that's what's taking place. You know, right now there are Americans walking around and I wanna say not many of them, actually the minority of Americans don't realize what's going on. I want to say Americans are not stupid as the devil may presume. No, there's a lot of us that are completely aware of what's taking place. We're not entering into communism. We are communist already. And someone would say, no, we're not communist. This is the land of the free, the brave. Yeah, right. Try crossing the street without getting a ticket for jaywalking. Try putting tile in your home, on your floor, without getting a permit from the government. You know, everything that we do needs a permit, needs a license. We can't even breathe without having a breathing license. Everything that we do, we don't realize, or do we realize that we are being oppressed? And a lot of times, Americans have been conditioned to accept this bondage and this bondage did not happen overnight remember this country was formed because it broke free of the oppression of great britain and after it broke free that's when it became america that's when it become liberated that's the celebration of the fourth of july well right now we are going back into the oppression of Great Britain. And I don't mean that literally. I mean that symbolically. We're going under the rule of spiritual wickedness in high places. And it's happened slowly. It didn't happen overnight. It happened over years and years and years and years and years and conditioning and conditioning and conditioning. Before you wake up, you realize you're in chains, you're in handcuffs, you're in prison. And the problem with that is there are people who are blind to what's taking place. There are people who are distracted by their jobs. They don't even realize they're robots being appeased by TV, entertainment, sports. And these are all tricks of the devil to get us distracted from what's really taking place. The definition of entrapment, a person is entrapped when he is induced or persuaded by law enforcement officers or their agents to commit a crime that he had no previous intent to commit. And the law as a matter of policy forbids convictions in such a case. 
See, if you would take all of the laws and the ordinances and the regulations and the policies and the cameras and the police enforcement and all the branches of in government, the, the federal, the state, the city, the military, the FBI, I don't even know half of them, all the, the oppression that we're surrounded by. And all the laws and the rules and the policies, if you would take our condition that we are allowing, if you would take that and apply it to those back in the 1940s, do you know what would take place? A civil war would take place. There would be no accepting of today's conditions back then. Do you think the people in the old days would, would accept homosexual marriage? Do you think they would accept abortion? Do you think they would accept all the things that we've allowed? Having to uh, get licensing and permits to bear arms, having to get license and permits to even uh, to remodel your own property. Do you think they would allow these things? And, and sometimes as an American, we cannot ever experience of freedom until we go outside of the condition that we are in. Uh, what I mean by this is that when I traveled to the Philippines, not watching it on TV, not reading a documentary to it, when I went to a third world country where they don't have the finances to have cameras on every block, where they don't have the city finances to have 50 police officers follow you down the road, where they don't have the finances to pay people to watch you on satellites, where they don't have the finances to oppress you the way they're oppressing Americans. When I stepped off of the plane in the Philippines, I experienced a supernatural freedom that I can't even, words can't even describe it. There was so much freedom that I didn't even know how to react to it. I didn't even know how to react to it. In the Philippines, you can take a small child and put it on the front handlebar of your motorcycle and go whipping down the road without worrying about the police officers pulling you over, ticking, ticketing you, arresting you, putting you in jail. My point is this, am I saying that that's a smart thing to do? Am I saying that that's safe? Am I saying that that's a good idea? No, I'm not saying that. But the thing is this, is they have the liberty to be able to do that. In the Philippines, you could have a thousand people riding on top of each other on a jeepney. Well, someone may say, well, that's not a good idea. That's not smart. Yeah, I agree. But try doing that in America without getting pulled over by the police. Try doing that in America without getting a ticket. No, you can't do that. See, they have the freedom and the liberty. If someone wants to fall off and get ran over by the car, th that's their right. They have the freedom to be able to do that. See, we don't realize how oppressed we are until we actually go and see another condition outside of our own. Am I saying that the Philippines is better than America? Am I saying that America is better than the Philippines? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that we need to realize what's taking place. We are in communism, not entering into it. We are in it. Uh, God has been removed from all institutions throughout this country. The institutions that were founded originally by biblical principles and biblical men, now we're being bombarded with spiritual wickedness in high places. If we read this Bible verse, Philippians chapter 1, verse 15, it is true that some are preaching out of jealousy of, and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. One preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, and the other of love, knowing that I set for the defense of the gospel. Right now in the pulpits, in some of them, let, let, let me say that, in some of the pulpits in America, you have pastors and teachers preaching not out of the love of God, but they're preaching through manipulation, with strings attached, through greed, through all these things. And as a Christian, we need to discern wherever we're at what is being taught. 
And this is the thing, because a pastor may have been preaching outside of the Bible one day does not mean the next day he will continue to do the same thing. And if you have a pastor or preacher teaching in the Bible one day does not mean he's going to always be in that form. We have to discern each and every word that comes out of the mouth of a man of God to see if it is a word of God. And the thing is this, if you are in a church or a congregation, you know, we have to question, first of all, why are we there? Are we only in the house of God because we can get fed? Are we only there because we're entertained? Are we only there because of what the services can provide for us? What happens if the church removes the hot meal service? What happens if they remove all the large gathering of people? What happens if they remove the good-looking women inside of the church? What happens if they remove the good-looking men outside of the church? What happens if all the strings attached of the benefits are removed and we're only left with the Bible? We're only left with worship and praise. We're only left with the Word of God. Will we still remain? Are we just being manipulated or persuaded to be there with strings attached? See, because God is going to prove who really truly loves him and who does not. And if God assigns someone to a particular place or a particular gathering, those people are going to be there regardless of whether their ego is being stroked. They're going to be there regardless of whether they're being made to feel good or feel bad because they're there seeking the truth. And so we need to question our own self. Why is it we're doing the things that we're doing? In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Is that us? We're in a condition where we only go to hear what we want to hear. And the moment we don't hear something that we want to hear, we leave. Is that our pride operating is, or is that humility? See, God will have us to question our own intentions. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword and it will divide the word and the spirit of truth. And it will show us ourselves. We need to, we need to overcome this time that we're living in. And right now, the time that we're living in is going to prove who is who and what is what. I heard a story about a minister who went to the jail and offered a church service on Sunday. And this minister was competing against a local football game. And out of 200 people inside of the jail, only 20 of them preferred to go to the church service in the jail while they were yet locked up. Only 20 out of the 200 people in jail chose to go to the church service. And the 180 other inmates chose to watch a football game over going to the house of God, over gathering together in Jesus' name. And if that is the truth of man, while they are oppressed in prison, while they are inside of jail, if that is the heart of the condition of man today, what is the heart and condition of man outside of the jail to those who are free, so to speak, entering in? We are in the last days. And right now, we need to keep choosing God over this world. Be of good cheer. Jesus Christ has overcome the world. We don't, need to, we don't need to live in fear. We don't need to live in anger. We don't need to live in jealousy. We can live free in the Spirit of God, regardless of what conditions take place around us. God bless you and be encouraged in Jesus' name.